If you're a creeper, this is not the car for you. That's right, it's a dual clutch transmission, and that's not super good for your car. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Trunk Talk. My name is Charlotte. And I'm Gabby. And today, you can probably guess what we're talking about. It's DCTs, PDKs, DSGs, whatever you want to call them. They are here to stay, and they're in your favorite SUV, which is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. So a lot of you guys are probably wondering, Charlotte, Gabby, why is a dual clutch, which is typically in performance vehicles, in my three-row grocery getter? Well, Charlotte, and to that I would say, why is it in a Ford Fiesta? And to that, I have no words. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> so in today's episode, we're going to talk about what a dual clutch is and how it differs from a traditional automatic, uh, automatic transmission. We're also going to talk about different types of dual clutch transmissions, why they're good, why people don't seem to like them, and also how to drive them. All right, let's get into let's it. Let's get into it. I'll first start off with what a dual clutch transmission even is. So it's a transmission for your vehicle. No way. Yeah, you won't believe it. <laughs> but it's kind of in a weird area because it has characteristics of a manual transmission and characteristics of an automatic. In simplest terms, I would probably say it's an automated manual. So you have two separate clutch packs. One's going to handle the odd gears. So think one, three, five, seven. And then your other clutch pack will have your even. So two, four, six, and eight. And well, that's 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 great and all. It's great that it has two clutch packs, but but what does that look like as far as when I'm in the vehicle? In How the many pedals do I got? In the pedal department. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. You only have two. So that's where it's very similar to an automatic. You have your accelerator and your brake, and that's it. If you want to change gears manually, you totally can. Usually, it's done by your paddle shifters or your actual gear shift lever itself in a Tiptronic sort of fashion. So. Um, whatever your manufacturer likes to call it, you know what I mean. You can increase or decrease, I mean upshift or downshift your gears by hand. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty straight up, right? Yeah. But everything when it comes to the inner working mechanisms of this vehicle is pretty different than what we're used to, depending on whatever it is you're used to. If you're a manual driver, you're probably used to, you know, manually selecting your gears, utilizing your clutch, and doing everything at your own terms and based off what your driving's looking like. This vehicle is going to make it simpler, or this type of transmission is going to make it simpler because a computer is going to analyze mm -hmm. everything and pre-select your gears for you. So similar to an automatic, how you don't really have to do any thinking, the car does it all, the dual clutch transmission will do that, but it is far more engaging, and the reason why it's so popular in performance cars and got really, really popular when Porsche won a couple racing series in 1980 with Ooh. the PDK. So this is going to have lightning fast gear shifts. Think milliseconds mm -hmm. for a gear shift. Something that a manual transmission just can't do, regardless of the skill of the driver, a computer is always going to be faster. It's literally like playing to play, trying, I can't speak, it's literally <laughs> like trying to play chess against the computer. On hard mode. It's hard. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So it's all computer generated. The vehicle's analyzing what you're doing. Obviously, if you're accelerating, it's going to pre-select a higher gear to allow you to upshift. Mm -hmm. If you're decelerating, it's going to downshift for you. You can kind of play around with this and confuse the computer, but it's not exactly an easy process to do. And we'll talk more about that later. So now that we've talked about what it is and what it does, let's talk about the good and the bad. And here's where things get pretty interesting. Charlotte? Let's go. So this is going to be the good for my SUV owners. So as Gabby basically summarized is dual clutch and the utilization of the computer and all of its um, programmed shift points. That is some new technology and as we see new technology become more commonplace, we see it in our more regular vehicles, not just Highline, exotic or sports vehicles. Mm -hmm. Now again, you're probably still wondering, well, why do I have a dual clutch in my SUV when I'm going through the school pickup line, when I'm getting my groceries, why do I need a vehicle that makes lightning fast shifts? Uh, Speed. And it, it's fun, duh, that's the reason. <laughs> um, but if you are someone who is looking for a new SUV and you keep seeing all of these vehicles have dual clutch and you're doing your research, I don't want you to be scared of that, that this is some you know crazy high performance vehicle when it actually is really easy to use. And the reason a lot of manufacturers put it in their SUVs is because it shifts so fast, it gives you better fuel efficiency. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say better fuel efficiency, I'm not talking about it in contrast, you know, with your, you know, with your Porsches, with your performance vehicles. Those, yeah, those people don't care. Those don't go hand <laughs> in hand. They're in a different tax bracket. So they can afford the premium fuel. <laughs> Us <Maybe>. normal people, <laughs> we're in our SUVs, and we want that regular unleaded. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll take the cheapest gas you have to offer. <laughs> yes. And so that's one of the reasons. But also, as Gabby also said, is you're not necessarily getting a loss of power. The vehicle isn't feeling sluggish when you are driving it and getting up to those higher speeds. It just does those lightning fast shifts and it's going to be very, very smooth as you're driving it. Mm -hmm. Now, what advantages do you think of? So. Again, on, when we're talking about mainstream vehicles, mm. 
I definitely think of that. I do like how it's a more engaging feel. So whenever I drive a Kia Sorento, I have a huge smile on my face. If you guys watch our car reviews, you know I love talking about that powertrain because although it's not exactly an overly exciting car when you think of a three-row all-wheel drive SUV, Whoa. but the performance is phenomenal for a vehicle like that. It's very good on the fuel efficiency department considering what it is. It actually does better than its lower trim that utilizes a regular eight-speed mm -hmm. automatic. So you're getting better fuel efficiency, mm -hmm. you're getting quick shifts, you're getting a more engaging driving feel, and if that sounds like something that you're interested in a car, then I would definitely check out a dual clutch transmission. Definitely. But there is also the downsides. Mm. So some of the downsides that people usually mention is when they're driving it at lower speeds or in stop and go traffic, and that is sometimes they would say it feels sluggish. Mm -hmm. It feels lurchy, lurchy, a little shaky, mm -hmm. you know, not super fun. That's normal. Don't that's, worry. Yeah, it, that's a dual clutch, baby. <laughs> Next. <laughs> no, I want to talk a little bit about the differences in some of the dual clutches that we have is typically they're categorized, categorized, yes. how do I say that word? Yes. Uh, by either a dry or a wet type dual clutch. And what what's different? what's different about a wet? Well, a wet type dual clutch will feature oil-based lubrication to make sure that, number one, it can withstand a little bit more. It's going to have a bit more regulated cooling as mm -hmm. well, too, so less tendency to overheat and just allow for a more smooth shifting vehicle. So we're seeing a lot of our Kia and Hyundai product move over to the wet style. However, we still have a few vehicles mm -hmm. that feature the seven-speed dry type dual yep. clutch transmission. But the thing about a uh, dry type dual clutch transmission is a lot of people were driving it like how they would drive a regular automatic vehicle with a torque converter and they're putting a lot of wear and tear on that clutch yeah. because they're driving it and not utilizing best practices which we're going to talk about in a little bit too and we've also done a, a, another video on it. Full video. Completely highlighting those. Yep. Um, but the benefit of a wet type dual clutch which is in the Sorento which is what I drive is that it can withstand a little bit more abuse because it's got that cooling it's not going to be at risk of basically like burning out, overheating, which can be a big thing with dual clutch transmissions if you're not taking proper care of them. So, I can't quite remember where I was going with that if I'm being completely honest. Uh, but yeah, clunky or jerky feeling a lot of times at lower speeds is what people complain about, um, that lurchy feeling. But I think something that's really cool is a dual clutch with the, you know, the computer automated shifts and everything like that, that's new technology. There's also going to be technology to help you in the way that you drive it that is going to be implemented. And these are on regular vehicles too. They're on regular, um, just you know, six speed, eight speed automatic vehicles with a torque converter. They're on normal vehicles too. It's not just isolated to a dual clutch. So what are some things that you shouldn't necessarily do if you're driving a dual clutch? DCT do's and don'ts. So when it comes to don'ts, you definitely, I'm guilty for this. So I, do, <laughs> I, I don't have a dual clutch for a daily driver, mind you, so it's fine. So if I'm on an uphill and we're in standstill traffic, mm -hmm. I like to balance out my vehicle just by using its transmission. So sometimes I'll take my foot off the gas. I know I'm so crazy, wow. <laughs> sometimes Good I'll take my foot off the gas and just allow my vehicle to balance. No foot on the brake, no foot on the gas. The car is just at a standstill. Do not do this on a dual clutch transmission because right now your vehicle is just right in between. It's kind of in a confused state. It doesn't know what's next and it's just holding on with the strength of its transmission. Yeah. And that is not good because gravity is weighing against you. The vehicle wants to roll back, Absolutely. but it's holding itself up and it's just not good. Don't do that. Another thing is in low speed, so think stop and go traffic. A lot of people want to creep. Don't creep. Don't, no, don't, don't be a creeper. No creeping allowed. That's saved for the Ford Transit Connects. Um, <laughs> which we, we've got. Which we've got, by the way, if you guys want to buy one. Anyway, so when you, you get that sudden urge to just allow your vehicle to roll forward. Again, it's not in an actual gear. It's kind of in its standstill point or standby state between getting into first and anything really. So it's kind of slipping its clutch just like you would in a regular manual. Obviously that's not good for long-term health of your vehicle. It's okay if it happens once in a while, but if you're in stop and go traffic for 30 minutes on a blistering hot summer day and your vehicle is constantly in its standby slipping state. That sounds fun. I can't tell you that car is going to last. Standby slipping state. Yeah, that's not going to be a 20 year old car for you. <laughs> At least not with the original transmission, that is. Yeah, so let's yeah. talk a little bit about some of the tech that is there to combat these common things that people want to do but shouldn't necessarily do. Mm -hmm. So Gabby talked about being on an incline. So a lot of vehicles are going to have either hill start assist or downhill brake control, which is going to do both. But basically, it's using the foot brake. It's using actual foot braking, not just trying to balance your vehicle and holding it and having it stop by using the transmission and putting a ton of like excess wear in the clutch, which you don't need to do. Yeah. Um, instead, it's just gonna hold it with the foot brake, which makes 
a lot more sense yeah. if you think about it. You just get to dazzle everyone behind you too with your brake lights. Why, why wouldn't you want to do that? <laughs> but then also when it comes to creeping is a lot of vehicles are going to have some variation of smart cruise control, which you actually can use in the city too. It doesn't just have to be isolated to the highway. But that from there, you can actually set your lane follow assist to give you a greater distance. You allow the vehicle- Following distance yeah. assist. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that one. <laughs> uh, but it gives you a greater distance. That way it gives you more time and more space to get up to speed. Um, that way you're not just kind of creeping and it gives more time for the clutch to be previously disengaged, re-engage and get into the proper shifting pattern too. Mm -hmm. That way you can follow out your vehicle. Also, yeah, you go ahead. You oh, say something. I was gonna say, I think it's worth noting that if you make a sudden change in a manual transmission vehicle, you can skip gears. You can't do that in a dual no. clutch. So if sudden something sudden happens, your vehicle has to run through that cycle of gears. Mm -hmm. If you're suddenly stopping, it's it's dropping. It, the gears are going down. If you're suddenly accelerating, again, you're running through one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight all those gears. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I think is really helpful, and this is probably the simplest I can make things, is when you're stopped, stop, have your foot on the brake. When you're going, have your foot on the gas. Don't allow your vehicle to just lurch because that's when the clutch is slipping. If you're braked, everything's disengaged. If you're in gear, things are in gear and it's lined up and rolling. And you know what feature you can do to help with that? Auto hold. <laughs> auto hold braking. I know some people don't like that, but what auto hold does is it basically is like applying your foot to the brake. Again, you're not stopping uh, just by having the clutch hold you or having the transmission hold you. You are stopping with the brake. Emergency brake up front. Yeah, which is really cool. So that is actually going to disengage the clutch for you. And then as you take your foot off of that and put your foot back on the gas or just put your foot back on the gas in the case of auto hold, is it is going to allow you to then engage the clutch and move, move on, mm -hmm. which is really cool. So. If you're listening to these and you're like, well, you guys talked a lot about the do's and don'ts, which seems like pretty normal, you know, parent, city driving. Yeah. And if you're listening to that and you're feeling a little bit worried, don't be worried. Go and drive one for yourself. If you were thinking, you know what, the Kia Sorento or the Hyundai Santa Fe, they were on my list of vehicles I wanted to look at and test drive, go and do just that. Absolutely. Test drive them. Feel the comfort. And I also think that you'll have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And it, you don't have to be an auto enthusiast or like freaks like us to enjoy driving a dual clutch transmission vehicle and all of the but quirky little best practices. It does help. And maybe you'll become one too. Yeah, maybe. You'll become that girl <laughs> if you want. <laughs> yeah. But it is a lot of fun driving a dual clutch personally. It's quickly become my favorite type of powertrain to utilize. And yeah, I don't know if there's too much else to be said on that. What do you think? Do you want a fun fact? I would love a fun fact. Oh, I don't have one, but we can try to say. Oh, what are we in the back of? We're in the back of a 2024 Hyundai Kona EV. And this one certainly doesn't have a dual clutch transmission, but at one point the Hyundai Kona gas version did. There it you utilized go. a Fun seven track. speed dry type dual, dual clutch. And it has now been switched to an eight speed automatic as per request, request by not us, but everyone else. <laughs> so things change. Things change, vehicles change, yep. technology changes. Let's have fun with it. And manual is no longer, no, I'm not going to say yeah, it. It's too controversial. Yeah. Okay, see you guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't well, forget to leave a like. Leave a like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.